Have you ever felt stuck in your job and feel like it's too late for a career switch? Ten years ago, I was sitting in university studying business and IT, thinking I was on the right path. Something didn't feel right, and I knew that I wanted more. And then I found out about something called computer security, which is what cybersecurity was called in 2014. Fast forward to today, I work as a senior cybersecurity analyst, and I'm working remotely. How did I get there? Well, this is what I'm going to show you in this video, so that you can see how I got into cybersecurity without any experience. My name's AJ, and I've been in cybersecurity for the last eight years. And on this channel, we teach all things cybersecurity for beginners. So let's get into it. So before I got into cybersecurity, I was on quite a conventional path. I studied business and IT in my A-levels, and then I went to university to also study business and IT. So actually, I thought I was doing what I expected, where I had to go and get a degree. I didn't even know what job I wanted to do after, but for some reason, I was told getting a degree was a good idea. And I didn't feel particularly inspired by what we were learning in our business degree. Most of it was business focused. There was a little bit of IT in there. And most of it was very basic. Like the IT stuff was kind of like learning Excel, learning Word. And the business stuff, well, didn't really teach you how to start a business. So I definitely was looking for something more engaging, challenging, and meaningful. Now, I wouldn't say my degree was completely worthless because there was one module that I chose to pick, which was computer networking, which actually taught me the fundamentals of how computers actually talk to each other. So this networking module actually had a tiny part of what they call computer security, which is what cybersecurity was called back in 2014. And I remember my lecturer showing me Google dorking or Google hacking, which is a way to use search operators or search Google for information that shouldn't be there. And I used to work for a real estate agent, a small business that I was working for in the summer. I put their website using the search operators, Google dorking, Google hacking search operators, and it returned back an Excel spreadsheet that contained a full list of all their customers, containing all of their customer information, phone numbers, addresses, and even the offers that they were putting in on certain houses. But this effectively was my first hack, and it got me intrigued into computer security. I then told my lecturer what I had found. He advised that I should tell the company what had happened, but then he also advised me to go down this path for my end of year project. The problem was my degree was teaching me about business and IT. So I was about to go into an end of year project on something I knew nothing about. Thankfully, and I owe a lot to my lecturer at that time because he pushed me down that route and he gave me the foundations of saying that you should write a penetration testing report for this small business. And having my lecturer as a mentor really helped me build those foundations in cybersecurity. Because I didn't know anything about cybersecurity, it was great to have him here to be able to share ideas with about my up and coming end of year project to make sure that I was going in the right direction. So it was a big leap trying to learn about penetration testing and cybersecurity without any background in it and having to do it all on my own and only some tips from a mentor. But I think this self-learning is what really helped me excel in cybersecurity today because you need to be somebody who is going to be a continuous learner because everything is always changing in cybersecurity. So you need to stay up to date. The best thing I did was set up my home lab because I was doing a penetration testing report on this small business. I needed to use tools like Nessus and other penetration testing tools which I set up at home and got experience with before going to this small business to actually test them on their network and this then is what gave me the hands-on practical skills that allowed me to say okay I understand the theory of certain cybersecurity topics but now I know the practical ways to do it as well. Of course there are so many challenges with trying to set up your own lab when you haven't done it before there's so much technical jargon out there so much things that you have to try and pick up on your own so many configuration issues that can come up that you need to try and resolve on your own. And of course, there is always the overwhelming nature of trying to start something new. But this did make me more confident because as I began with trial and error, going through all these configuration issues, setting up my home lab, it worked out that my end of year project helped me get a really good grade in my end of year degree. But of course, there were so many things that were trying to get into my way, so many technical failures, because when I was going to the small business network and trying to run some of my penetration tests, especially setting up certain scans, like vulnerability scans, a lot of them just weren't working. And I was spending hours and hours in this small business to try and get some results for my report. Of course, I was facing imposter syndrome because I was trying to do something that I had no experience in. But of course, my lecturer was there always to support me. I was going in for regular meetings just to go through some of the things that I was working on. And he was able to point me in the right direction. And having a mentor in cybersecurity is just as important these days as it was back then. And of course, I was facing enemies in myself and externally. 
a lot of the other students on the course were wondering why I was doing this instead of going down the traditional and business and IT projects. And I was trying to say, well, this is something that I enjoy. They thought that it wasn't a good idea and that I should move and do my end of year project on something more traditional related to the degree. And of course, self-doubt starts to creep in here as well because you start to think, hmm, maybe they're right. Should I be focusing on business and IT and not be going down this computer security, cybersecurity route? But I'm glad that I listened to my gut and I went with my end of year project, which was in cybersecurity, because that helped me build the fundamentals in cybersecurity, which is exactly what I needed to be able to get a job. So once I graduated, I had this project under my belt, which is my only experience in cybersecurity. Like I said, my degree, the only thing it taught me was about that 30 minutes about Google Dorking and my basics of networking, which I got from that small module. So out of three years from that degree, I didn't really get much, but what it did give me was extremely important that you need as well is to get your IT fundamentals and your networking fundamentals from somewhere and also your cybersecurity fundamentals as well. So when I graduated, I knew that I wanted to work in cybersecurity, but I knew that I didn't have the experience. So what I did first, I signed up to a master's in cybersecurity and then I got a job in an IT training center helping to set up computers to kind of build my networking experience so that I could look more desirable when going for those cybersecurity jobs. But to be honest, I didn't want to do another degree, but this is the only way that I thought that I could build those cybersecurity fundamentals even further just so that I could get that job. I got a job in January and I was starting my master's degree in September of 2015. So what I did, I used, got my resume, got my CV together, used a skills-based format, use the experience that I'd learned from my penetration test and report and my end of year project and put that into my resume and formatted it in a way um, to demonstrate how my experience would allow me to become a cybersecurity analyst. And when I was looking at that time, it seemed like cybersecurity analysts were the easiest route into the cybersecurity industry. And based on what I read, I thought I could definitely do that job didn't really know what it was about but it seemed like something if I could get my foot in the door that I could do and then I was just extremely consistent with applying for cybersecurity jobs every single cybersecurity analyst job that I saw put my resume format it directly for that job and I made sure to send out a cover letter as well and specifically said what my experience was and where I was trying to get to and then I applied for hundreds and hundreds of jobs I promise you that I was just really consistent with the jobs that I was applying for I was getting phone calls from recruiters, many of them saying, you haven't got the experience at this time. Can you get experience in cybersecurity? I would explain, I'm looking to go and do my master's. Um, but then they would say, okay, come back after you've done that. But again, I didn't really want to pay for a master's degree uh, because I thought that I could become a cybersecurity analyst before doing this. And there was so much fear building up. I was getting doubts. Can I actually become a cybersecurity analyst? Is this something that I'm actually capable of? Because all these recruiters kept saying that I didn't have the experience. I then eventually started getting some traction with recruiters who were looking to put me forward for junior analyst positions. And then I successfully got an interview. When I got into that interview, I completely failed. I just couldn't understand the questions. I didn't know what they were asking from me and I didn't know what they wanted. All of the questions they were asking me at the time were more seemed like basic cybersecurity questions, but because I didn't know the answers, I just completely failed at those interviews and it was one of the worst things ever. But then I realized that my resume and CV was getting traction because I was getting interviews. So my next problem was how can I start acing those interviews and getting through them? Because I noticed a consistent theme in those interviews that most of the questions that they were asking were very similar. So I started learning the topics that were coming up in those interviews. And there was actually one company that I applied for twice, got two interviews and failed those interviews. And then I knew that I just needed to learn what was coming up in those interviews. So I set my mind to learning for that. I actually applied for this company one more time. This time I successfully got through that phone interview and I was asked to come to an interview in person. So of course this was even more nerve wracking because I didn't know what questions were gonna be asked. I just covered a lot of the questions that were covered in the initial stage interview. I asked the recruiter if there were any tips. He provided me with some possible questions that could come up and I just learned those to the best of my ability. And I went to that in-person interview. I remember turning up being extremely, extremely nervous and then sitting down with one analyst and one manager who was gonna do the interview for me. Uh, there were some questions that I didn't answer very well. I didn't actually feel like the interview went that great. And I was thinking, oh, this is another scenario where I'm gonna be failing this interview. But lo and behold, 
couple of days later, they phoned me back and they said, there's one final interview that you need to go through with the senior director. Would you be interested? And of course I was. So I did this final stage interview with the senior director. I explained what I was trying to do, the experience that I had from my degree. I said that I was looking to do a master's to get more experience in cybersecurity, but it wasn't something I wanted to do. We had a great chat, the conversation went on, and then eventually it came to an end, and then I just waited. And as time passed, I was getting less and less hopeful that I'd actually managed to secure this job. And so I started then looking again towards my master's and continuing to apply for junior cybersecurity analyst jobs. And nothing came, I didn't get any response from the recruiter, so I went ahead and went to the first day of my master's and I signed up, went to the introduction day, got my student card and on that day they actually explained that when it gets to the end of your project they actually work closely with one company based in where I was which was in Cardiff and that company was the one that I was actually waiting for a response so I was thinking uh, wouldn't it be great to work for that company and I just kept thinking well I'm still waiting for a response but it's not looking hopeful so then I'd signed up to my masters I thought this was it and this was going to be me for the next year before I can try to get a job in cybersecurity. but then a couple of days later I was out in the bar with a couple of friends and it was during the rugby world cup in 2015 so I'd actually had a couple of drinks and I had a number call me from the US so it was about I think it was about 10 o'clock at night and I didn't really realize who it was and then it clicked that that company that I was applying for is actually based in the US so I ran outside answered the phone and they offered me my first job as a junior cybersecurity analyst and I actually couldn't believe it it did feel like a dream I know I'd had a little bit to drink but it also was an amazing feeling and the offer they actually give me so if you think cybersecurity is well paying the offer they actually started me with was £19,000 per year. So don't always get your hopes up with getting a big salary when you're first starting out. But the main thing I'd realized is that I just secured my first job in cybersecurity and now I could build my experience from here. And it was a great feeling and I'd actually accomplished what I set out to do nine months before. And I know that I'd signed up to my master's. I'd even gone to the first day, but thankfully I hadn't paid anything yet. So what I did is when I got the offer through, from this cybersecurity company, I declined my master's and said that I would no longer be taking part. And then October of 2015 is when I started as a junior cybersecurity analyst, and then I never looked back. And now nearly 10 years later, I'm still working in cybersecurity, but now I'm a senior cybersecurity analyst who specializes in instant response. And over those years, I also helped two friends get into cybersecurity by following my same pathway, which is to get some IT fundamentals, get some networking fundamentals and then learn the skills of a cybersecurity analyst and focus on those jobs only. And my journey has completely changed my perspective on challenges because if I can get into cybersecurity without any experience, then I can do anything. And I hope this also gives you the confidence to try and do the same thing as me. And that's why we created this channel to help you learn cybersecurity as a beginner so you can speed up this process and get your dream job. And now I want you to reflect on currently where you are and where you're trying to get to in cybersecurity because if I can do it, then you can do it as well. Because it really never is too late to pivot into doing something that you find more fulfilling. Now that you know my journey, I want to thank you for watching and go and watch this video next, which is going to tell you exactly how to get a job in cybersecurity without any experience.